This whiteboard video is part of the series on the diagnosis and management of common complications of cancer treatment. The topic of discussion today will be nausea and vomiting. By the end of the video, you should understand the following objectives. Pause the video now to review them. Nausea and vomiting are very common side effects of chemotherapy and radiation therapy when given to areas such as the abdomen. It is also the most reported side effect feared by patients prior to starting treatment. Fortunately, chemotherapy-induced nausea and vomiting, or CINV for short, can be prevented in up to 70 to 80 percent of patients. Complications of CINV can include medical complications such as esophageal tears, malnutrition, electrolyte imbalances, and dehydration, decreased quality of life, decreased compliance with chemotherapy, and other treatments. The overarching principle of management is to prevent nausea and emesis in the first place. Antiemetic prophylaxis should be administered any time where the risk of CINV is greater than 10%. The risk is determined by the potential of the agent to cause nausea and vomiting, as well as several patient factors. When delivering radiation to the abdomen or pelvis, one may also consider prophylactically giving medications to prevent nausea or vomiting. We will not go into details of the regimes, but rather highlight some general principles. First and foremost, it is important to maintain hydration and nutrition. This can be done by eating small meals staggered throughout the day. It may also help to have patients only eat a light meal prior to treatment. Encourage the patient to drink lots of fluids. Cool beverages sipped on throughout the day may also help. There are some studies that have shown that ginger may reduce nausea. Now on to some common medications. First, the most common drug is a 5-HT3 antagonist. An example of this is ondansetron. Another common drug class are the neurokinine-1 receptor antagonists. An example of this is a prepotent. Dexamethasone can also be used and is mostly used in a combination regime to control nausea and vomiting. Finally, there's olanzapine, a second-generation antipsychotic that blocks 5-HT2 receptors and dopamine D2 receptors. In general, many cancer centers and inpatient units may have protocols to manage nausea, and it is good to become familiar with your local practice. This concludes our discussion on the diagnosis and management of nausea and vomiting in the cancer patient. For more information, please visit learnoncology.ca. Thanks for watching.